two months of uh, rest i am back in action welcome back to you as well as to me okay so next few lectures in the series will be on power series uh, we will so it's actually i'm going this i'm trying to make it as a preparatory thing for complex analysis also so why i'm going to assume the variables lie in complex number field also but if you are unhappy whenever i write z or a complex number you can assume it's a real number x okay and the proofs are the same absolutely no problem yeah right let's get into action So we had already learned something about uh, infinite series, etc. Right, and we had also learned the infinite series of functions, namely something like oh, let me see. I still have to get the okay. yeah. something like summation f n of x as n is from maybe one to infinity or zero to infinity. Fs are functions from a set to R or C. Okay, we have talked about these things. Now, today what we are going to talk about is a special class of such infinite series of functions. Okay, let us try to motivate. Suppose let us throw, let us go 200 years back. Right? I will learn something about differentiation. Thanks to Newton. Right, so if you give a polynomial a0 plus a1x plus an x power n, and I think of this as a function f of x, then I know what the derivative is namely, the derivative f dash x is a1 plus 2a2x dot dot plus n a n x power n minus 1. Right, so 200 years back again. Okay, it's possible the only functions I knew are polynomial functions, okay, and modulus and composite of all such things and uh, rational functions taking quotients of polynomial by another polynomial or some such thing, right? These are my limited things, right? Now I have learned something about differentiation. So, I, what I can ask is I can ask that there exists a function f from r to r so that if if is differentiable and you have dash the derivatives itself is the question clear of course you know the answer right <laughs> namely from your high school days you know e power x the derivative is e power x right but how did anybody find that function okay that's what we are trying to understand so since i know only something like this let me assume my function f is of the form something I do not know but I'm just trying to experiment okay there are some more dots I do not know so what will be my f dash of x that will be a derivative of a naught that will be zero then derivative of a one x then derivative of a two x squared which is two x two x three and then three a three x squared and so on plus n a n x power n minus 1 and so on see at present i'm thinking of a polynomial i okay don't think of infinite series i'm just thinking of polynomial right now suppose f dash equal to f what are the things that then i should know if f equal to f dash then i should say my a1 equal to a naught and 2a2 must be equal to a1 but that is a naught Therefore, my a2 is a0 by 2. Right? Now, to look at, let's look at the next one. 3a3 must be a2 x squared. Therefore, what should I have? I should have 3a3 must be a2. But a2 is a0 by 2. Therefore, a3 is a0 by 3 times 2 or I can also write a naught by 3 factorial right now suppose I had assumed 
my a n is a naught by n factorial. Right? Then let's look at the nth term. The nth, the nth term is going to be, uh, rather the n plus 1 term is going to be n plus 1, a n plus 1, n to x power n. But that is corresponding term here is going to be a n plus 1, x power n plus 1, etc. Therefore, so I should equate this. These two should be equal. That is, n plus 1, a n plus 1 must be equal to a n. But a n is a naught by n factorial. Therefore, my n plus 1 must be a naught by n plus 1 factorial. Do you understand? Pause. Review. Proceed. Yeah, do not worry about how we can do it. We are just formally manipulating algebraic symbols. That's it. Okay. And mathematics developed that way. Now we try to understand, say, give us meanings, make sense out of that. That's where the rigor comes, the analysis comes. Okay. So these are the things which we really miss. Okay. We just say take it and prove it. Okay. Right. Let's go back. So, what I have done? So, where do I go to the next page? New page after, okay. All right. So, what I have found before is my FX. Once I know a naught, I seem to know everything. A naught, then a one is this, right? One by two factorial x by sorry x by one. Sorry, I'm very sorry. So what did we find? We found that a naught is given. A one is a naught, and a two is a naught by two factorial, and a n is a naught by n factorial. Therefore, that's going to be a naught and again a naught x plus a naught by 2 factorial x squared and a naught by n factorial x power n and so on. Therefore, I can write it as a naught 1 x plus x squared by 2 factorial plus x power n by n factorial and so on. This keeps going because when I want to make sure f dash equal to f, okay, I want to keep on increasing the degree of the polynomial. It's not a polynomial now, okay? But just think of it that way. You understand? So, this is my f of x. Therefore, what is f of 0? f of 0 is 1, a naught. Right? Just formally manipulating symbol. Therefore, if I look for a function here from r to r, which is differentiable, and 2, f dash equal to f, and 3, f at 0 equal to 1, then the function fx looks like this. 1 plus x plus x squared by 2 factorial, x cubed by 3 factorial, and plus x power n by n factorial, and so on. This is for x and r. Do you understand this? So formally, we have found a function f from r to r with the following three properties. That is, f is differentiable and the derivative of f is f and f takes a value 1 at 0, right? But this is a formal expression. But now that we know analysis, I have taught you infinite series. Therefore, for x in r, this is an infinite series, right? If x is in r, fix this, okay? Okay, this is an infinite series, all right? So, if I if I want to say this equal to fx, that means it has to converge. If it converges, I denote the function by fx. Okay, the value by fx. Because it's a number which depends on x, therefore I call it fx. Do you understand that? Okay, so how do I do that? So do I know this converges? So is this converging? That's the next question. Yeah? So if it's convergent, then I have got a function. 
okay right now how do i find whether it is conversion then we know this is an infinite series one of the popular tests we can do for example i can do ratio test okay so that is going to be x power n plus one if you want to model as by n plus one factorial by n factorial by mod x power n this also take it that is going to be mod x by n plus one okay that goes to zero right okay something fell down okay therefore the by ratio test this series is converging okay so the sum i do not be a pop x do you understand this so i have defined a function here from r to r whose value of x in r is the sum of the series <coughs> x power n by n factor of n equal to 0 to infinity notice that this is always known as the sum since it's converging and for which x it converges for every x in r so i got a function that's good enough right but if our result is good in analysis, there are questions you should ask. What are the questions? The questions you should ask is, is this function continuous? Second question I will ask is, is the function differentiable? Okay. The third question I ask is, if it is differentiable, is its derivative equal to f? Right. Remember the way I got f x is formally differentiating, thinking of, thinking of it as a polynomial. Now I just have to make sure all these things can be answered. Do you understand? Think about. Do not hurry. Okay. Once you appreciate, you will see it, the theory becomes easier. Why we are doing certain things. Okay. So use this continuous. Is this differentiable? Is f dash equal to f? And is f of 0 equal to 1? These are the questions I would ask. But f of 0 equal to 1 is very easy because this is this infinite series. Therefore, when I put x equal to 0, the series is going to be only okay, 1. After that, 0, 0, 0. Therefore, it's 1. This is answered easily. Okay. Right. Would you follow that? That's good enough okay so what have we arrived at so what I, okay this is where the power series comes so the function here yeah, you can see is a, by defined by this okay so i can write it as fn of x n equal to 0 to infinity where fn of x is a function x power n by n factor that's it where fn is a function from r to r right Therefore, this is nothing other than a series of functions, but each nth term is not just like that. It is a pure polynomial of only one. Okay, top degree alone is present. That is only power of x appears, nothing else. Okay, f n of x is not even a polynomial because polynomial meaning if it is nth degree polynomial, n minus one degree, etc. can occur. X power n minus one, etc. may occur. You don't have that only power okay it's the power of here the power of x appears do you understand all these things yeah so we are ready for a power series what is a power series okay power series is a formal sum of the form summation c n z power n where n is 0 to infinity and my cms are complex numbers and z i assume to be complex number it's a formal sum so it's a formal sum infinite series of functions where each nth function f n of z is just a polynomial c n z power n and no other degree of appears right or if okay now, so what do I want to know? So the question I should ask, therefore, is I want to deal with this. When does this make sense? Do 
does this convert for all z and c and if it converges it defines a function f from c to c or the domain let me simply say domain what do i mean by domain of f for whatever values of z this power series converges and call it domain of f okay or simply domain to c where for each z this is the sum of the infinite series c and z power n. Yeah, right. This is the question we want to answer. Now notice that this C n z power n, if we think of this f1 of z, this is a polynomial function from C to C. Therefore, this is continuous and differentiable. I assume that you know something about differentiability of so functions from C to C and Okay, if you don't ignore it, assume that is a real value. Yeah, I can do that. Is it clear? Okay. So, if the series f1 of z, which is same as summation c n z power n 0 to infinity, if this is convergent uniformly, right? Okay, then we know this defines a continuous function, right? Yeah, when, when do you say this series converges uniformly? Let's look at the partial sum ck z power k k equal to 0 tm. Okay, this is your let us call it gn of z. So if and gns are continuous, and if gns converge uniformly. Okay, to, so then this G will be continuous. All these things you have seen already from minimum convergence. Do you follow that? So we want to know when it is convergent. So the basic theorem about this is the following theorem, which is a theorem on radius of convergence. Okay, before we go further, let us look at one more example. So we already saw one example, namely z power n by n factorial 0 to infinity. Okay, this we will simply call it exponential series. If you know that word, yes. And the second thing, our favorite thing, is this 1 plus z plus z squared plus z power n and so on. That is summation z power n 0 to infinity. We know this is convergent if mod z is less than 1. This is the so called geometric series. Right? Now you saw how exponential series converge for every z in C. But this is going to be convergent only in the so called unit disk of B01. Okay. This set of all numbers, common numbers, so that mod z is less than 1. Yeah. We follow that. Whereas let's look at a third series, something very interesting. Something like, let us say, n factorial z power n. Okay, we have again 0 to infinity. Right? I want to know that it's going to be convergent. Right? Now notice that if z is not equal to 0, right, then there is a natural number n so that n times mod z will be greater than 1. Right? Therefore, if n is greater than or equal to capital M, then n factor. Okay? Or maybe I will just simply say n to the power n so that life will be easier. n to the power n, okay? n z modulus to the power n is modulus n power n z power n that will be greater than 1. Right? Therefore, if mod z is not equal to 0, the nth term of the series does not converge to 0. Do you remember that? Recall if I have a series a m, if it's convergent, then the sequence a n is converges to 0. That is, limit a n is 0, right? So, if the but what I have found, I have found that n uh, okay, is greater than 1 for all n, then I could capture it, right? Therefore, 
the the associated infinite sequence namely n power n z power n or n z whole power n does not converge to zero right therefore this is not convergent at all for z not equal to zero not convergent i'm sorry for the handwriting mine is usually bad and here i have not found a good way i have the table size etc not convergent here that is different from zero so let us look at all these three things what have we found there is a series the so called exponential series which converges to for all z and c and then the geometric series converges only if mod z is less than 1 then there is another power series which does not converge to any non zero real number remember any power series i have as i have written is convergent at z equal to 0 because what we have is summation c and z power n when z is 0 except okay c not c not z not power 0 z power 0 that will be 1 c not rather plus c1 z that will be 0 c2 z squared that will be 0 also the put will be only c1 so that will be convergent you understand that so any power series will be convergent okay at z equal to 0 i have understood but in given a power series anything can happen so what can happen it may converge to all for all z in c or it may converge to for all z which lies in something some condition or it may not converge except at z equal to 0 okay there is another interesting thing which i would like to say okay suppose i have uh, a z let us assume not equal to 0 and summation c n z power n 0 to this is convergent right now let's look at another w a complex number so that mod w is less than mod z then summation c n w power n this is convergent do okay we are going to prove all these things so you understand what this is something fantastic what is it saying so this is my complex number okay suppose i was z not here it is convergent okay right then look at this thing this is mod z not okay for any w here it has to be convergent so it cannot happen or even in the real number k suppose i have 0 this is my x not where it is convergent you cannot okay this is minus x not then for any x here it has to be convergent that is the beauty of power series yeah do you like it okay so so if i right so if i say that i am given a power series power series c n z power n okay so that is that z equal to let us say 2 plus i is convergent all right and let's take w equal to okay 1 minus i okay is this convergent c n w power n okay can it happen at w it's not convergent c n w power n is divergent can it happen it cannot why because modulus of this is let's say modulus w squared is going to be 1 plus 1 2 whereas that is going to be 5 modulus square of z that was square root 2 less than square root 5 finished so are you following now this is the theorem we want to prove okay before going further there is also let us look at a power series okay centered at some other point a in c these are the power series of the form cm z minus a to the power n. that's it remember again this is convergent if z equal to a okay so essentially we are going to look at this is my z this is my a then i am looking at 
something. What are the domain around A where it is going to be converged? Right. So for are you following? So here also we are we are going to prove the same thing. Okay. So let us the major theorem which I want to say is okay. Let summation C n z minus a to the power n and equal to zero begin a power series. Then there exists an R n zero infinity. I will explain what that means. Zero less than equal to R, R less than equal to infinity, whatever it may mean, I will explain so that if mod z minus a is less than r there is a unique so that first condition if mod z minus a is less than r the series cn z minus a power n is convergent and two if mod z minus a is greater than r then summation cn z minus a to the power n is divergent Divergent meaning not converging. So again look at the picture. It says this. So I have A here. Okay, there is an R. Okay, this is R. This is my Z. So for anything here it will be conversion. And for anything outside it is divergent. Okay. For anything here it is going to converge. Okay, now R could be zero. What does it mean to say R is zero? That means mod Z minus when Z equal to A. Remember, any power series when Z equal to A is convergent, centered at A will be convergent at that point Z equal to A. All right, okay. And suppose what is the meaning of R equal to infinity? When I say R equal to infinity, what it means is okay, for any Z in the commerce number, this is going to be convergent. Okay, so the, such an R is unique. Okay, now let's go back to our earlier three examples we did. For this exponential series, my R is going to be infinity. For the binomial series, my R is going to be one. And for this series, this R, my R is going to be zero. Yeah, we want to prove all these things. Yeah, have you understood? In fact, we are going to prove something much, much more, much stronger. In the way of the proof, we will actually show something more. We are going to say, in fact, if zero less than if r is positive, when r is infinity, we assume it's a positive. Okay r is not 0, r is not equal to 0 because r takes the value you know, 0 to infinity therefore r is not equal to 0 meaning r could be positive real number or r could be infinity okay and if choose any r less than r then the series summation c n z minus here to the power n 0 to infinity is hold your breath uniformly conversion on B A R. Remember B A R will be contained B A capital R and if R is strictly less than R capital R then it's going to be uniformly conversion. Okay this is part of the theorem. We will actually part of the proof. Okay the proof will actually show this. Now what is the advantage of this? Suppose this is true, okay, I will give the proof in the next lecture. Suppose this is true, what does it really mean? Let us look at my f1 of z as cn z minus a to the power n. This is a polynomial that is continuous, right, continuous for every z in c, right. 
So in particular, right, Apple, if I think of this as a function from VAR to C, remove it is conversion, I can think of this as a function now. Let's go back. I can think of this if it is conversion, I will define f of z to be the sum of the series cn z minus a to the power n, where z is in b a capital R. Right? Therefore, f is a function from b a capital R, the ball to c. Now, I want to now the opens are also functions. The opens are actually functions on all of c, but it is also functions of this, and they are continuous. Right? And what I am saying, the infinite series is going to be uniformly convergent on VAR if my little r is less than capital R. Right? Therefore, this series Fn of z 0 to infinity is uniformly convergent on VAR, but each one of these functions are continuous function. Therefore, we already know okay, the resulting thing. If I define f of z equal to f1 of z, but that is nothing other than cn z minus a to the power n 0 to infinity with the mod z minus a less than r. Okay, this is a continuous function. So, what do you think I prove? Something very interesting. I prove that okay for every z in VAR okay let us look at this I want to say f is continuous at z why see z minus a is less than r therefore I can find an r so that small r such so that mod z minus a is less than r less than capital R therefore my z lies in this ball right and what do i know f is continuous on b a r yes and z belong to b a r therefore f is continuous at z do you follow that yeah please pause we will proceed so notice that the very interesting thing is we are not saying if this the unique r is called let me go back this unique capital r is called the radius of convergence of the power series and what we are going to claim is something interesting if a little a positive little r is given so that little r is less than capital r then the pump okay the series is uniform conversion the power series is uniform conversion on b a little r Right? Since each of the summon is a polynomial, it's a continuous function. Right? Therefore, I have yeah, an infinite series of function, continuous function, which is uniformly converging on the ball BAR, on the disk BAR. Therefore, the sum of the series is a continuous function. Okay, from uniform convergence is follows. Very good. Right? Now what I am claiming is to start with any z in the big ball B A capital R then f is continuous therefore the function f is defined on b a capital r to c i want to say it's continuous how do i do that because if I z belong to b a capital r mod z minus a is strictly less than r therefore choose a little r in between mod z minus a and capital r therefore my z lies in b a little r therefore f is continuous on b a little r and z belong to b a little r therefore f is continuous then what i have shown is though the power series may not converge uniformly on the big disk B A capital R, but the information it converges on any smaller sub disk B A little r is enough for me to conclude the function is continuous on the big disk B A capital R. Okay, have you understood? Please go through. We will come give the proof of this theorem. In the next lecture, I hope all of you enjoy. Okay, after two months I am taking, so I it will take one or two more lectures for me to streamline. Okay, I try to improve my handwriting also.
please speak to them okay thank you meet again take care and stay safe